great liberator Frederick Douglass said, once let the black man get upon his person the brass letters U.S. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket and there is no power on earth which can deny that he has earned the right to citizenship in the United States of America. In the earliest days of our nation, African Americans answered the call to arms in defense of America whenever that call came. From our Revolutionary War to the Civil War, black men and women on the battlefield were crucial to victory. Yet the fame and fortune that were there just due never came. For their blood spent, the lives lost, the battles won, they received nothing. They went back to slavery, real or economic, consigned there by hate, by prejudice, by bigotry, and by intolerance. They lived with a bitter lie. After each war, they were quickly discharged to protect this lie. Approximately 180,000 Negroes served both sides during the Civil War. Over 30,000 died. After the war, the United States Congress authorized the formation of six Negro regiments to be commanded by white officers. Reorganization in 1869 reduced the number of black units to four, the 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments and the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments. For the first time in U.S. history, black men were serving in the regular peacetime army. While garrisoned at frontier posts in the midst of prejudice and discrimination, these black troops demonstrated a courage and a devotion to duty second to none. Called Moaks, Brunettes, and Niggers, those men, those Americans, were to become known as the Buffalo Soldiers, an honor probably bestowed on them by the Plains Indians they fought and chased. To the Indians, the black warriors reminded them of the fierce fighting spirit and appearance of the Buffalo. The moniker Buffalo Soldier was worn as if it were a medal by those black soldiers on the frontier and by the black soldiers that served in the U.S. military in the years to come. More than a century after the organization of those black regiments, the United States Army has dedicated a monument to the Buffalo Soldiers. Fort Leavenworth was the first home to the 10th Cavalry. It was the men of the 10th who were first called Buffalo Soldiers by the Indians. The other Negro units adopted the name soon after. This monument is more than a tribute to the 9th and 10th Cavalries. It is a symbol to honor and recognize the vast contributions and sacrifices of black Americans that have been banished to the fringes of our historical consciousness. And the profession of soldiering became the only profession in America where a black citizen could demonstrate his equality in terms everyone could understand. So look at this statue. Look at him. Imagine him in his coat of blue, on his horse, a soldier of the nation, eagles on his buttons, crossed sabers on his canteen, a rifle in his hand, a pistol on his hip, courageous, iron-willed, he was every bit the soldier of his white brother. He's out riding ahead of the main element. And he's been out there for a long period of time. Uh, hot, dry, and dusty. And as he's... Uh, coming to the end part of his patrol you know you're kind of tired and you're more relaxed because fortunately you haven't run across a foe 
and uh, just as he's feeling comfortable, he spots something that has his curiosity, and it's urgent. On the frontier, the mission of the Buffalo Soldiers was to suppress the Indians' retaliation to the escalation of settlers moving west, railroad construction, and to protect the mail. Despite the discrimination, the discarded hand-me-down equipment, and broken down mounts from other units, the Buffalo Soldiers were determined to prove themselves. We can't say they had a monopoly on suffering. But I think their primary objective was not for that present time, but was for the future. They fought hard, they um, played their role hard for the simple fact that they wanted to be considered men, and to do this and have a better future for the generations coming in. The Buffalo Soldiers had racial prejudice all around them not only from a generally ungrateful civilian population, but from within the army itself. It was difficult to find experienced white officers to serve with black troops. George Armstrong Custer was offered a lieutenant colonelcy in the 9th Cavalry. He refused and eventually received the same rank with the 7th Cavalry. Most white officers and enlisted men had the opinion that Negroes lacked the necessary qualities to be professional soldiers. The black troops persevered. They yearn to be respected as men for themselves and their race. It was a dream. It was the hope. And they, hang, they were hanging on to that, every morsel of it. This is why they were able to fight. This is why they were able to die. This is why the desertion rate was so low. This is why they were so disciplined, because they had to set an example for tomorrow. Over the years, the white officers who served with the black regiments were quick to notice their black comrades' proficiency at soldiering. Twenty-three Buffalo soldiers received the Congressional Medal of Honor. Many were wounded and killed while in service to their country. During the Indian Wars of the American West, the Buffalo soldiers played a major role in the eventual defeat of Geronimo and the renegade Apache leader, Victorio. They joined in the pursuit of the young desperado, Billy the Kid, during the Spanish-American War, the 9th and 10th Cavalries led the charge up San Juan Hill for Teddy Roosevelt. The Buffalo Soldiers were assigned to various posts in the West over the years. They enforced U.S. neutrality laws and protected American border towns when the Mexican Revolution threatened to spill over to the U.S. side. The Buffalo Soldiers chased bandit and revolutionary Pancho Villa into Mexico. Villa had raided Columbus, New Mexico and killed 23 Americans. The first commanding officer of the 10th Cavalry, General Benjamin Gerson, knew the fiber of these men and their gallant tradition. And he loved them, he led them, he respected them, and he lived with them. And in December of 1888, when finally he had to give up command, he paid one final tribute to his regiment. It goes as follows, headquarters, 10th Cavalry, Santa Fe, New Mexico. In pursuant of General Orders Number 97, the undersigned relinquishes command. In doing so, he desires to express his deep regret at being thus separated from the regiment he organized and has so long commanded, but he is gratified to be able to refer even briefly to its splendid record of nearly 22 years of service, rendered as it has been in the field and at the most isolated posts that post on the frontiers, always in the vanguard of civilization. The officers and enlisted men have cheerfully endured many hardships and privations, and in the midst of great dangers, steadfastly maintained the most gallant and zealous devotion to duty. And they may well be proud of the record made and rest assured that the hard work undergone in the accomplishment of such important and valuable service to their country cannot fail sooner or later to meet with due recognition and reward. Benjamin H. Grierson, Colonel, 10th United States Cavalry. And now 104 years later, on July 25th, 1992, his dream 
of recognition and reward has finally come true. The recognition of the Buffalo Soldiers signals a new awareness of the immense contributions of black Americans. The Seminole Negro Indian Scouts, one of the most decorated cavalry units in American history. Harriet Tubman, who led slaves to freedom via the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. Black women and men can boast a multitude of accomplishments. History is filled with the exploits of black cowboys, ranchers, mountain men, and explorers. The achievements of black educators, legislators, and lawyers. Thurgood Marshall was the first black man to sit on the United States Supreme Court. Men who championed equality, like Frederick Douglass, W.E.B. Du Bois, and Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. There are numerous black inventors. Granville T. Woods received over 50 patents for his inventions, and electric lighting pioneer Louis Latimer worked with Thomas Edison. Henry O. Flipper, a Buffalo Soldier Lieutenant, was the first black man to graduate from the West Point Academy. He later became a world-renowned engineer. Along with Flipper, John Alexander and Charles Young were the only black officers in the Buffalo Soldiers during the 19th century. Blacks in the military, like the Buffalo Soldiers, led the way for all black units, like the Tuskegee Airmen, heroic fighter pilots of World War II. Too often the achievements and accomplishments of black Americans are not passed on to our children. Children of all colors, people of all colors, should have the opportunity to appreciate the whole fabric of our American heritage. We're as much part of America as anyone. We really are. They can't take that from us. Matter of fact, uh, many blacks were here even long before the white. Oftentimes, you say, well, I'm African. Go back into your history. Maybe you're not all African, because more than one-third of the black population is mixed with Indian. Right. And if you look back and you say, well, I'm African and you have Indian, then you're African and Indian and you have the best of two worlds. So that means you are as much native son as the Indian and you're much foreign, as much foreign as the white. I, I think if uh, they can look at this piece and say, well, we were somebody, we were important, we played an important part in the whole scheme of things. If they can truly say that and feel good about themselves, then we've accomplished something. Facing the challenges of their day with a courageous spirit of commitment with honor is the Buffalo Soldier's legacy to us. That spirit of commitment with honor is still alive today in these youth. These are the Vision Quest Buffalo Soldiers. They're facing the contemporary challenges of today with a new spirit. These young people come from the subculture of crime, drugs, and gangs. Most are from fragmented families. All have issues they're facing. Abandonment, abuse, lack of boundaries, and esteem. They're juvenile offenders and have been placed by the juvenile courts into Vision Quest, an alternative to locking up young people. Learning to ride and care for a horse is a new challenge for these city kids. And like most people, they had never heard of the heroic deeds and accounts of the old Buffalo soldiers. Being a black man and uh, hearing about the Buffalo soldiers was a big, big thing for me because I never heard about it until I came to Vision Quest. Why society don't talk about it, that's a question I still have to answer. While on Quest, these Buffalo Soldiers experienced some of the same hardships the original Buffalo Soldiers faced in the Arizona wilderness, and with the same undaunted spirit. On the trail, armed with a new knowledge that blacks were more than slaves in American history, they envisioned the possibilities of their own future. The modern Buffalo Soldiers take what they've learned about the heritage of ethnic minorities to communities. As soldiers of peace, they carry a message to neighborhoods and schools across the nation. They tell us it's not too late to say no to drugs and stop the violence in our communities. The Vision Quest Vaqueros echo the same message and remind their audiences that people of all colors have contributed to our American heritage. The kids in these programs demonstrate with pride their new perspective of history and themselves. 
To some, these former juvenile offenders have become positive role models for the next generation. The Vision Quest Buffalo soldiers were invited to be a part of history. Over 300 youth and staff were present at the dedication of the Buffalo Soldier Monument. I think this Buffalo Soldier thing is, uh, is really a key to uh, minority people to realize that, uh, that minorities have had a, a major impact on freeing our, our culture. And, uh, and I don't think we say enough about it. During the ceremony, Eddie Dixon, the monument sculptor, encouraged the audience, and especially the youth, to set their goals high. Spread your wings and fly as high as you possibly can. Your only limitation is your mind, not the sky. Remember, you can be whatever you want to be if your dreams are high enough. The Buffalo Soldiers of yesterday are once again serving the American people. With a renewed honor, they're reopening trails that have become overgrown with indifference and prejudice. Trails that are clearly blazed with pride, perseverance, courage, and dignity. Trails that lead to an American heritage brimming with the heroic deeds and great achievements of black Americans, bequeathing a legacy of honor to us all. We must also never forget that the spirit of the Buffalo Soldier will only be satisfied when the day comes when there are no more firsts for blacks to achieve. When we no longer measure progress in America by firsts for anyone, but only by last, when that great day comes when all Americans believe and know that they are equal. So this monument is more than a symbol of African Americans in the military and more than a symbol of American history. The soldier you see here represents all of our beloved America, what we were in the past, what we are now, but most important of all, what we can be, what we must be tomorrow. America has come far since the days of the Buffalo Soldier, but the struggle is not yet over. The former enemies of the Buffalo Soldier, the truest Americans of all, the Apache, the Cheyenne, the Comanche, they have come far, but their struggle continues. So the powerful purpose of this monument must be to motivate us, to motivate us to keep struggling until all Americans have an equal seat at our national table, until all Americans enjoy every opportunity to excel, every chance to achieve their dream, limited only by their imagination and their own ability. We will leave this beautiful monument site today knowing that caring Americans made a modest dream come true. But let us also leave, my friends, determined that the most important dream in the world, the American dream of progress and full equality, has gained today with this monument a new vision, a new strength, and a new tomorrow.